Welcome to another exciting year here in TUSD. Thank you so much for taking on the responsibility of testing coordinator for your school. We have decided to format training a little differently this year, and we hope it will better fit your needs, as well as your busy schedules. I am Michelle Sigifus, the District Testing Coordinator. And I'm Daniel Sanchez, the Instructional Data and Intervention Coordinator. We're here to support you as you venture into the world of assessments. As a testing coordinator, it is important to know your job responsibilities. The job description for testing coordinators can be found on the TUSD Assessment Resources, or TAR, and on the 2018-19 Test Coordinator Teams, in files under the general section. We will show you later in this presentation how to access this. As your site's testing coordinator, you will need to know the testing dates and work with your site administrator to create testing schedules that will work for your school. To access this information, you will need to be familiar with the TAR and the team site. This is also where testing manuals and overviews will be posted. It will be important to have this information so you can effectively plan, organize, and monitor testing procedures. You will provide the staff at your school with training and materials to properly assess students. You must also make sure students are receiving the appropriate accommodations related to their IEP, 504, or ELL status. Besides working with your site administration and staff, you may also need to work with technology services, assessment and evaluation, or other district staff to resolve any computer or site-based issues related to testing. Site administration may also ask you to help coordinate data collection efforts with site staff. This can include coordinating district surveys, such as the Student Survey of Teachers or the School Quality Survey. You may also be asked to facilitate groups of teachers who are working on assessments, along with monitoring the school's assessment plan. Furthermore, you may be called upon to provide and or recommend assessment resources, such as supporting or training staff in the creation of Common Formative Assessments, or CFAs. We have broken down the list of responsibilities, so you will know what you need to complete before, during, and after testing. Before testing, it is important to make sure all computers and other devices are in proper working order. Don't wait till the last minute. If a work order needs to be put in for a device, it can take some time to be fixed. With your administrator's approval, your Site Teacher Technology Liaison, or TTL, can help you with this task. You will need to make sure all staff are properly trained before testing. For state testing, once training has been given, teachers will need to sign a test security agreement. This agreement will need to be stored in a safe place for six years. Before testing starts, accommodations will need to be entered for students who have an IEP, 504, or ELL status. Please check with your ex-ed and ELL teachers to make sure no students are missed. With the help of your school administration, a testing schedule will need to be created. There will be a template that may be used on the TAR and Teams. Make sure your testing schedule includes a plan for makeups and early finishers. For state testing, teachers will need to be entered into the program in order to proctor a test. For school city, students who enter school after the test activation date may need to be activated. To make sure testing runs smoothly, it will be important to coordinate with your site TTL their responsibilities. Depending on your school, they may be asked to help deliver computers on wheels, cows, or help to make sure all computers are logged into the kiosk before the students enter the room. Having students log into the kiosk right before testing can cause delays and potentially throw off your testing schedule. During testing, your main job is to monitor and support teachers as needed. This can look different depending on the school and site administration. You will need to be the contact person between TS and your testing staff to solve any computer issues that arise. You may also be asked by a and &E to deliver any needed or time sensitive information to your testing staff. It is important that all testing rooms have some sort of quiet we are testing or do not disturb sign posted outside the room. 
As you are monitoring teachers, it will be important to make sure these signs are posted during testing. Once teachers have completed testing, they will need to inform you if any students need to be moved to another setting for extended testing time, as well as which students still need to be tested. Make sure that all rooms have the needed materials to test, such as scratch paper, extension or power cords for the cows, and headphones, just to name a few. Once testing has been completed, it will be important to make sure all students in classes have tested. For those who have not, makeup testing must occur during the testing window. Scratch paper must be destroyed once students have completed the test. Other materials, like testing directions, may be recycled or used again for future tests if applicable. Any materials that need to be returned to A&E should be returned ASAP once testing is completed. Quarter 2 benchmark tests will include a writing portion. The student's writing will be scored by your school. It will be important to develop a plan for scoring and make sure all scoring is completed by the end of the scoring window. The testing window dates are listed on the district assessment calendar, but we have also listed them here for quick reference. Benchmark tests will be held for quarters 1, 2, and 3. State testing will start in April. Schools that opted to administer district pretests have already started, and post tests will take place in May. Pre and post tests are optional, and in addition to benchmarks and state testing. If you are supporting the student surveys, they start in November and January. Make sure to keep up on all of these dates, as testing windows are hard deadlines. Once the window is closed, it cannot be reopened. Our goal this year with trainings is to maximize your time. We hope to provide more online trainings such as this one that can be viewed at your convenience, but we also know some of you prefer the hands-on, in-person approach. To support those of you who prefer to meet in person, we will provide open labs. Bring us your questions about testing, or if you would just like us to walk you through the steps one more time, we can do that too. Our open labs will be held at our testing warehouse, located in the same building as Key Control. Since schools start at different times and your availability ranges from early morning into the late afternoon, we have created both morning and afternoon lab times. No need to stay for the entire lab time, just drop in for the support you need at the time that works for you. Our early morning labs will be from 7.30 to noon on the second Thursday of the month and our afternoon lab times will be from 1 to 5.30 on the third Tuesday of the month. We are asking that you visit us at least one hour a semester for extra support. Feel free to split up the time to best suit your needs. We are here to support you. We have developed and refined two online sites to help you succeed in coordinating, training, and disseminating testing information at your school. The first site is TUSD's Assessment Resources, or TAR, which can be accessed on the intranet through SharePoint, and also within Teacher or Admin Resources. The TAR is also listed under the intranet Quick Links. TUSD employees can also access the TAR from home by going online to the TUSD1.org website and clicking on the Just For You Employees section where it is listed under the quick links. Please note that you will be prompted to log into Office 365 if you have not already done so. The TAR is organized using sections and pages with each section listed on the welcome page and along the left hand side. The pages will be listed within the column between the sections and the page content. There is a brief video site visitors can view that provides a quick tour of the TAR. The sections you will generally use the most for test coordination are state tests, district tests, and surveys. Materials that your testing proctors will need will be located within the pages of these sections. If you are new to School City, 
you can find tutorial videos and other resources within the School City Help section. You will also be added to the 2018-19 Test Coordinators Team site. To access, log into Office 365, then click on the Teams icon. You can also download the app to your desktop. Microsoft Teams are organized using channels and tabs. In addition to the general channel, we have created a channel for each assessment. We will use the Conversations tab to post announcements, and we ask that you email your questions. We'll use a Q&A document to organize your questions and answers and upload this document as well as other relevant content, such as proctor instructions and test guidelines, within the Files tab. We'll communicate updates primarily via email, with references and links to posted announcements and uploaded files. Thank you again for taking on the responsibility of Site Testing Coordinator. We appreciate your willingness to go the extra mile for your school. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us by email or phone. Listed here are the A&E contact person for each region. If you are not sure of what region your school is located in, ask your site administrator. For specific school city questions, you may contact Daniel Sanchez. And for specific state testing questions, you may contact Michelle Sigifus. Thank you again for working with us. And we look forward to a great year with a great staff of test coordinators.